Hi, I'm Ron James, and this is another edition of the Sedona Scene. And with me today, I have two very special guests, my friend Peggy Phoenix Dubrow, and from Germany, Lutz Raba. Lutz is a researcher who's been doing some work with new technology for energy interpretation. Lutz, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Well, my background is basically I'm a uh, Master of Science, Electrical Engineering. I used to work for about 20 years for the telecommunications industry, working with radio technology, mobile phone systems. And since 2002, I got very much interested in vibrational medicine, energy medicine. And 2004, I had a chance to see a device that was able to capture energy fields. It's called a GDB camera, and it's um, caught uh, my interest, and this is where I started to look into these technologies. Now this camera, this is, a, I remember you told me earlier, it's kind of a next generation of Carillion technology. Can you just real briefly tell us a little bit about Carillion technology and where this device is, uh, you know, kind of like a next generation? Well, when uh, Carillion uh, technology came up in the early 80s, it was a technology to capture energy field images on photo paper, basically. And if you are a scientist, you would like to see a certain reproducibility of the data. Now, with modern technology using uh, digital image processing uh, devices and software, we are actually able to reproduce uh, what we measure. So the camera was not invented by me, of course. It's an invention that was done in St. Petersburg at the State University by a professor, Dr. Korotkov, Konstantin Korotkov. And he was investigating the Kielian principle and the Kielian phenomena. And at the end, they developed this camera and a software package to come with it to work. Mm -hmm. You know, most people that see this interview probably know you already, but let's mm -hmm. recap just briefly the EMF balancing technique and the lattice theory. <laughs> um, well, the lattice theory has come from, I've had two experiences of expanded consciousness. There are many of us out there that have them. The first expanded consciousness blew me apart. All my chakras wide open. I was out of balance. It was very difficult to be here. I studied for 15 years pretty much everything that everyone else has studied. The second experience, again, the consciousness went to this expanded level. But this time, I literally, my, my experience is to say I became this pattern of this lattice. And then I started to see this lattice in other people's fields. I started to work with this lattice. I started and I developed something called the EMF balancing technique, something a, a technique. So it's very matter of fact saying that anyone can do this, anyone can work with it, and started to understand how to work with the lattice. People started having experiences in their life. This started in the living room of my home. Long story short, there's so much to this work now. It's actually in some universities and is, is growing in its recognition. It's practiced in over 70 countries now. And it all started with a truly a love of God. And what happened for me is now I am in love with my family of humanity. And people will write us and say, thank you so much for your work. It, it's really changed my life. And always the answer is, thank you so much for taking the time to learn about this tool and how to use it, and you change your life. I'm very clear about that. You guys met through an interesting pair of synchronicities. Can you tell us a little bit about what brought you guys together? We have a mutual, wonderful friend and colleague. His name is Michael Schaefer. He, too, is from Germany, now living in England. And Michael has been a great supporter of this work, the EMF balancing technique, and helps us in your uh, and many different projects and different things we're doing. And when we met, I, I saw you there. I was introduced to him. It was very interesting because I was just starting to teach the phases 9 through 12. And I was told that Lutz would be doing measurements and would that be okay. And I trust Michael. And I also liked what I felt when I saw Lutz and heard a little bit about the technology, but I didn't know very much. I just trusted. My focus was on teaching. As a matter of fact, Lutz and I hardly talked when he first started doing, like I wasn't over his shoulder saying, so what are we measuring now? How's it coming out? I just let it be and really trusted his expertise and what he was doing. And then we've started to talk and the measuring has been not only here in Sedona, but also in Germany. 
And so it just, it just started as if it was, um, we always say that, meant to be just the synchronicity, and I trusted that, it, that this measuring was appropriate. So you've actually been able to take measurements and readings during EMF before and after uh, times where people are practicing the EMF balancing technique, and you've found that there's noticeable changes in, in the readings that your technology is getting. Can you just tell us briefly about that? Yeah, exactly. Well, what we saw was uh, Michael, our common <laughs> friend, he mentioned that there would be a new teaching of new phases 9 to 12 in Sedona, and he knew I was using this equipment, so he asked me, would you be interested to measure what we do there? I had no idea what EMF was. <laughs> And so I went there and said, okay, let's do some measurements and let's see what is happening. And already when we started the first two, three days, we could see really changes in the energy field from initial measurements in the morning for five participants of the, of the study group to measurements right after the sessions. They had three sessions per day and we saw really differences there. So I said, then, okay, let's do the whole study for, for um, Sedona. But well, being a researcher, you never are satisfied with only one result. So we had to repeat the same measurements for approximately the same setup that we used in Germany. So Peggy taught a 9 to 12 phase uh, EMF class in Germany, and we said we have to redo the measurements for this Germany class to see if we see the same changes, the same results. Is it a Sedona phenomena, or is it really something that is connected to the EMF? So I was really curious in getting to know was it something that we can see in two different classes in different places and time zones? So we had to make sure that it wasn't like some kind of Sedona vortex affecting the... <laughs> well, probably. Well, I can I tell. mean, that happens here. Yes, yeah. sure, sure. The compasses spin backwards, you know. <laughs> sure. I, yeah, I was more concerned about the altitude and the fact that in this one particular class, we had people here in Sedona from 27 different countries. And I felt that it was important to start doing some sort of measuring. Just to say that over the years, to me, the measurement has been how people are able to take this tool and change their lives and accomplish the things they want to do. But this has brought up a whole new awareness and more detail of what we're actually doing with this work. Now, you have some slides to show us to kind of illustrate what's going on with the readings that you've taken. You want to just go over the first one? Yeah, exactly. I can do that. I have them here on my... Uh, computer. Now, when we say we measure energy fields, what do we actually measure? We measure the uh, uh, amount of photons around the fingertips. And not only the amount of photons, but also the distribution. Uh, so then we should be able to measure these changes. We measure photons and the distribution of photons around the fingertips, and we can actually capture this on camera. Then digital imaging, uh, digital image processing software allows us to subtract data, real numerical data, as well as images uh, that we can then use for analysis of the energy field. We get very detailed data down to organ level, but right now in the study we were not actually observing organ level energy states. So what we were looking at was to measure the students in the morning when they came for the training and we took initial readings and we could see a certain distribution of the energy field and we could even see some energy deficiencies in some areas, which is quite a normal state because it depends also on our um, psycho-emotional state, the energy sure. field. Now, then we measured the students right after the session and what we could see was an increase of their energy. This means not only that their physical, mental, emotional energy increased, but also the balance increased in the images. That was very interesting. And we could see this over and over again for the different sessions and the different students that we measured. And you did this in two locations. Let me ask you this. In the Sedona location, there was people from 27 different countries. Mm -hmm. And then when you did it in Germany, was it mostly Germans? Well, it was mostly from the German-speaking countries like uh, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. So we had people from the same time zone uh, we had people from the basic, basically from the mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. cultural area, whereas in Sedona it was completely different people that we had in our study group. The only thing that's, that matched basically between the two study groups was the gender. So we had three female, two male students, and approximately the age of the so students. So that kind of shows us that the, that the EMF techniques and the readings that you're taking are functioning on a purely energetic level that crosses social barriers, language barriers, all the other different elements of humanity. And so we're dealing really with a fundamental basis of energy. 
Exactly. 